Hi, this is Ryan from rapidweaverclassroom.com, and I'm excited to bring you this tutorial covering the new features found in the Stacks 3 plugin from Your Head. Now, this is geared towards those who are experienced with the Stacks plugin. I'm not going to go into all the details of how to use Stacks in this tutorial. So, if you're new to Rapid Weaver or new to Stacks, then I encourage you to take a look at rapidweaverclassroom.com, where I have many detailed tutorials that cover all of the specific features found in both Rapid Weaver and in the Stacks plugin. And so I encourage you to take a look there if you're not familiar with how to use Stacks. So for those of you who are familiar with Stacks, this is going to be kind of a flyover of all of the great features found in the new version, Stacks 3. And so we will begin here by taking a look at the user interface in the edit view. So I'd like to begin with the display and the navigation of your Stacks in your Stacks library. We have this Stacks sidebar, which is the default view. We can collapse that with the library button and reveal it with the same. But we can have a number of different views available, and this will be very helpful depending on the size of the device you are using to work with Rapid Weaver. So for example, if you're on a smaller device, then you can choose to display the Stacks library in a window, such as this that hovers over Rapid Weaver. We could also use a popover, which is more like the um, Stacks 2 presentation of the Stacks library. And then we can also adjust the um, view of the icons themselves. So we have library options here, including icon size. I personally like the medium size. And then I can even drag out the sidebar window to place those into two columns side by side. So depending on the real estate space you have for your display, you can work with um, some different options here to present your Stacks library for browsing. Now, of course, we have the search function above, but there's also a number of other options available to the left. We have different categories of Stacks. We have partials, which we'll discuss in a moment. We have templates. We have images, which used to be media. We also have favorites, and we have the built-in Stacks. Now, if we come back, we can take a look at these Stacks and as we go through these, we find that we have information down here at the bottom. These are details about each individual stack. For example, if I choose the three columns, I can see the name, the description, who the developer is, and then some tags. We can use these tags to um, search for stacks. And so, for example, if I did a search for column, then anything tagged with column would be displayed here in this view. Additionally, I can choose to favorite items. And so if I want to favorite this stack, I would just click on the heart. And now if I go to the heart favorites view here, you can find the three column stack included. So this will um, be very helpful as you organize your stacks. We can also create our own libraries. And so I can click on the plus button and I can create a new library. For example, I could create a library for every project that I'm working on. So every project that has its own um, combination of stacks, I can kind of sort and organize that way. So I'd go back to my main stack list. For example, I'll take the two column stack. I can right click and say add to group and I can then add it to this new group that I created. This folder icon here will display that group and there is my stack. And so there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you organize your stack elements here in Stacks 3. So let's move away from the Stacks library now and let's take a look at some of the other new features of the Stacks 3 plugin. I'm going to begin by just grabbing a three column stack and I'll drag and drop that into the page. And we find, as we are used to if we're a Stacks 2 user, that we have the Stack Inspector here on the right. And like the Stack library on the left, we can choose how we want to display that. So again, we have the popover and the window views, which allow us to move that around if we need to, depending on the display that we are working with. Now the stack inspector by default is inside of the page inspector and the far right page tab. So if we collapse the page inspector, it will actually hide that. Of course, we can reveal it the same way, or we can use the stacks info button in the bar right here. And so that is working with the inspector on the right. Now we notice for the most part that these settings are familiar. We have background, border, layout, and then if we look a little bit in more detail at the background, we'll find a more flexible image background feature. We can drag and drop or browse for an image file on our finder, and that can place that image in the background. 
but we also have additional more flexible features for how that image is displayed. So we can tile that in different um, ways. We can adjust how it sizes inside of that space, and we can also adjust the positioning. So there's a lot of flexibility in working with an image in the background of any stack in Stacks 3. Now coming down below the borders and the layout settings, which um, pretty much have remained unchanged, we find that we have a responsive view for the three columns stack. So all of the column stacks that ship with Stacks 3 are now responsive by default. And in addition, we have a new responsive area of our stack inspector that includes ability to hide a stack and to adjust how the columns display based on different devices. So this is extremely handy. And the way it ha has kind of um, configured itself by default is for the three columns to stack when you get to a mobile device. And so that's what stacked columns refers to. If, for example, we also wanted those to stack vertically on a tablet, we could just simply click the tablet button to do that. Now, if we have content that we don't want to display at all on different devices, we can also choose to hide the stack entirely. So for example, if I wanted to hide the content of this stack on a mobile screen on a phone, I would simply click that button. So Stack 3 provides some built-in features for responsive design with hiding and changing the configuration of stacks depending on the type of stack that you are working with. And then of course we have this specific stack settings below and so for the three column layout we can adjust the widths of the columns and the gutter width as well. So let's build something a little bit here. Let me take the image stack and drop it in. I'm going to hold down my option key and just drag that across to make three of those. The image stack is also responsive, and we can see its responsive options here. In this case, it's simply to hide this stack if we want it to disappear on specific devices. I'm going to take a few images from my finder. I'm going to drop those in to the stacks here. And then let me take a header stack. I'm going to drag that underneath and go across. And then finally, I'm going to take some text. I'm going to place that text below the headers. And so now we have just a real basic and straightforward three column layout. Let's go ahead and preview that and we can see that presentation right here. Now we're going to look at a new feature in Stacks 3 that is extremely helpful and it is called Partials. I'm going to select my stack here and I'm actually going to adjust the view mode so I can see the name of the stack being used right here. And now I'm going to click on this button which is new to Stacks 3 and it's called Partials. I'm going to click on Partial, and now we have this view. This is the Partial Page View, and there's a lot going on here, and I want to talk about how we do this and why it's so important and helpful. So first of all, what we see is we have the exact layout of the stacks that we have just built in the Edit View. Now if I come to the right, I will find some options to give this a title, a subtitle, an author, and tags. So let me just give this... Um, a title of sample three column layout and then I can give it a subtitle and I'll just put some gibberish there and then I'll put my name as the author and I'll give it a tag of uh, columns and three column and then I'm going to click back now what we see here is we have the stack with a different name sample three column layout and now if I go to my partials in the library I see this is a stack that I've created and here is where it gets really cool I'm gonna to jump to a new page about us and I've got this sample three column layout under partials if I drag and drop that onto the page there is my content so this is immediately copied all of the settings from that stack onto this page but it gets even better if I go back to home and for example if I want to edit the content of this I'm just gonna click on the edit button I'm going to change this headline. And so let me just type in Stacks 3 is awesome. And then I'll go back. And I can see that right here on my home page, which I'm currently viewing. And now if I jump to the About Us page, I see that it has updated that stack here as well. So what Partials does is it lets you create a more complex stack that may include a combination of stacks but not only that it will also allow you to replicate content across all of the pages of your website at least those pages that are built with stacks 
So this is very useful in cases where you want to repeat content over and over from one page to the next, but there may be the possibility that in the future you want to change that content. And in this case, with partials, you only have to do it in one place and it automatically applies site-wide. And you don't even have to make the adjustment on any particular page, um, or on one specific page, I should say. You can make that adjustment from any page. So whereas I made this adjustment here to this text on the home page, I could do the same thing here, but do it from the About Us page, and it would apply to the home page as well. Now you can get really crazy with partials. You can embed partials inside of one another, and there are some cases where that could be useful. Um, really, you're pretty much um, without any limits when it comes to how you work with this feature. You can place third-party stacks inside. You can make them very complex, but the beauty of this is that you can continue, um, uh, you can replicate content across and only have to edit it in one location. Now before we jump away from partials to look at a couple other new features, I want to show you one more feature of partials that we haven't yet discussed. You may have noticed the uh, pin icons or buttons that are displayed here for each individual stack in the partial page view. This allows us to unpin certain content so that it can be um, unique and different across your partials from one page to the next. So for example, if I wanted this first header to be unique on each page, I could unpin that, and now it shows this view, and if I come back, I can now change that content. And so I could say, for example, this is the home page, and if I were to go to the About Us page, you would find that I still have Stacks 3 is awesome in that spot. So that new content here has not transferred over to the other page because it's unpinned from the partial. So that allows you to have content that can be edited um, uh, on a page by page basis that is unique to those pages. And then you can have other content that is site wide. If you apply it in one location, it will apply everywhere else. And so it's quite flexible in how you work with your partials. And so you can really come up with some creative ways of using those. But it's a very exciting addition to Stacks 3 and it's gonna be very useful for many of us as we design our websites. Now in regards to the rest of the interface, most of it is going to be pretty familiar. We have a lot of the same buttons. Our formatting toolbar has moved down to the bottom. Um, let me go into a text stack here and just show you that. And so if we click into there, we will see now activated all of the um, text formatting tools here across the bottom. And then we also have the cloud option for Stacks Cloud. And we of course will talk about that in the more detailed tutorials at Rapid Weaver Classroom. We also have the add link and remove link buttons located right here. And then all of the formatting for each individual stack as we see that located here on the right. And so much of this will be familiar, but there's a lot of flexibility, of course, in how you um, organize your stacks in the library. And then of course, with the new partials feature, you're going to be using that a lot. Now, one last item I want to cover, which is very helpful for those of us with a lot of third party Stacks is the new updates feature. And so if we come down to the updates button below the Stacks library, we will find this window which allows us to check for stack updates. So I'm going to go ahead and click on check now. And what this is going to do is go out and look for updates to all of the third party stacks that I have installed for Rapid Weaver. And it turns out that I have quite a few here at the moment. And what this does is operate similar to the Mac App Store where you can check for all software updates at once and install and update those at once. So this is a huge improvement over the Stacks 2 way of updating, whereas you had to um, manually apply every update for every stack available one at a time. This will simply check all of them for you. You can choose to update individual stacks with the update button here, or you can click on update all to have Rapid Weaver go through and update all of those for you automatically. So you will find the um, name of the stack, the developer, the release date, um, update information, including a link to release notes, which can be very helpful to find out what is new with that version. And then of course you can update, like I said, through the button here or with the update all button at the top and that will run through all of those. And then you also have a badge here at the bottom on the updates button to let you know that you have updates available to install. 
So that is a very quick overview of many of the new features found in the Stacks 3 plugin. It's a very exciting update and I highly recommend it, especially because of the new responsive features available natively in the plugin, as well as partials and the great updates system that you find there. Not to mention all of the great organization options that are available to you with your Stacks library and the way that you can even display that which is especially useful for those using smaller devices like a laptop to develop their websites. And so that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this tutorial. Again, if you would like to learn all of the details of how to use Stacks and strategies for building websites with Stacks, please take a look at rapidweaverclassroom.com for many, many more training videos. Thanks a lot.